Steve Buscemi is one of Hollywood's most popular and respected character actors, known for playing intense and edgy roles in movies like Fargo and Reservoir Dogs. As a child, Brooklyn-born Buscemi dreamt of becoming an actor and got his start doing stand-up comedy and landing the usual bit parts on TV and in film. It may surprise you that before becoming a star, he worked as a New York firefighter, a role he returned to when he volunteered to help recovery efforts after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. I guess after high school, I started taking acting classes, and uh, but it was a very slow progression. And um, I'm not sure actually when it was that I decided that I this is what I want to do for a living, but it was pretty young. And once I decided, I knew that I was in for the long run. It was Steve's scene-stealing performance as Mr. Pink in Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs which kick-started his career, winning him an Independent Spirit Award and earning him cult status in the indie film world. I think that was a film that got a lot of attention within the industry so that it's a little easier for me to get in the door on some films. While Buscemi's well known for doing quirky art house projects like Coffee and Cigarettes and The Hudsucker Proxy, Throughout his career, he's also done big studio films like Rising Sun, Desperado, and the comedy Airheads, which co-starred Brendan Fraser and Adam Sandler. When choosing projects, big or small, for Steve, it's all about the juicy characters. And maybe it is more of a broader comedy than I've than, that audiences are used to seeing me in. But for me, it was still a character film, and it was very much an ensemble and a film about people rather than some concept or chase or uh, contrived love story. So uh, for a commercial film, um, it uh, appealed to me. Steve's well known for his ability to play interesting, complex characters. So he's a perfect fit for the quirky Coen brothers. So far, he's worked with them a whopping six times more than any other actor. He says he will continue to work with them because he enjoys the types of meaty roles they offer him like Donnie in The Big Lebowski and Carl in Fargo. These parts are written um, in a way that you get to see um, another side of these characters, that they, become, that they become real people. So that if you're watching somebody that's a character that's real, I think you are going to care somewhat for them, even if they're doing horrible things. Throughout his career, Steve's played a lot of baddies, and in real life, he's had his own experience with some pretty dodgy types. In 2001, he was stabbed in the throat, head and arm during a barroom brawl. And maybe that's why he's so good at playing criminals, like the serial killer Garland in Con Air. Characters just get kind of labelled as, that's the bad guy, and he only does bad, bad things. Or this person is, you know, he's a loser and, and uh, you know. But, I mean, I don't see these characters like that. I mean, I don't approach it that, that way. I mean, I always try and approach any character that I play as that, that they're real people, and I try and put as much of myself into the ca characters. But he's not always the bad guy. In Armageddon, Steve played Rockhound, a squirrely geologist who turns out to be quite eccentric. You know, I mean, I know it's, it's a big action special effects film, but it's mm -hmm. also a character film. Mm -hmm. And that's what ultimately drew me to the, to the material. It just seemed like a character that I could have fun with. And there were other good characters in it. And um, those are the films that I always like the best. While some actors find the lucrative big blockbuster paychecks irresistible, for Steve, it's all about the craft. I just try and view it as a job and try not to think of how much money they're spending on it. And uh, uh, I mean, I don't really feel those pressures as an actor. Um, I was just flattered to be asked to be, to be in it. Steve's also earned praise as a director, making his debut with Trees Lounge, the story of a downtrodden mechanic. A semi-autobiographical depiction of what he believes his life would have been like had he not escaped working-class suburbia. The comedy drama was very well received, nominated for two Independent Spirit Awards. It just became apparent that, that uh, I should be the one to direct it, even though that idea was really intimidating to me. So then I wrote a uh, short film 
uh, just so that I could start out on a smaller scale and just get some confidence and uh, see if I liked it. It is a lot different from just acting in a film. There's a lot more responsibility and a lot more decisions, and I was willing to take that on. Steve continued directing with Animal Factory and Interview, but that doesn't mean he's turned his back on acting. He did double duty on Interview as the reporter doing a fluff piece on Starlet Sienna Miller. I'll always continue to act. That's, you know, I mean, I, I love it, and that's how I make my living. Um, and it, uh, you know, affords me to do films like, like this that, um, uh, you know, and these, these are, <clears throat> these are tough projects to get up, to get off the ground because I think a lot of, uh, financiers look and they see and, you know, they hear it's two people in a room and, and a lot of people don't have the imagination to know that that, that, that can be an exciting film. Um, so, uh. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, hopefully I, I'll uh, continue to do to do both. Steve's also directed TV shows, filming episodes of Homicide, Life on the Street, Nurse Jackie, and The Sopranos, where he also played Tony Soprano's cousin and childhood best friend. Talk about busy! While he's probably best known for playing quick-talking, scary types, Steve's also a talented voiceover artist, lending his voice to Randall Boggs in Monsters Inc. and Scamper in Igor and he discovered that working in the voiceover booth can be quite lonely. The hardest part about it is not having the other actors to uh, work with. So uh, sometimes it gets a little, a little surreal and lonely. Because uh, I like actors, I like working with actors. But, uh, but when the process gets further down the line, where you get to hear the other actors' voices and you get to see the an animation, then it's, then it's a little bit more fun. Married for more than 20 years, Steve admits he's drawn to family-friendly projects like Home on the Range. In fact, sometimes it's his son Lucian who decides which projects he takes on. It's not the first time I've been approached to play a Weasley character. So, um, uh, you know, because it's an animated uh, uh, film, um, I was just really uh, intrigued by the drawing. I was, and I, uh, I remember bringing it home to my, to my son when I was deciding whether I was going to do, uh, do the voice, and, and uh, he says, well, what does he look like? And I said, well, here's the drawing. And he goes, oh, come on, Dad, you got to do it. For Steve, voicing a character involves just as much preparation as a normal film role. So to nail the character of Templeton in Charlotte's Web, he felt it was very important to really get to know what it was like to be a rat. I hung out with a lot of rats, uh, you know, during the making of this film. And I can tell you that uh, I tried talking to a lot of rats. Not one rat would talk to me. I mean, I tried to find their secrets. Not one rat would speak up. So I found them to be very upstanding and, uh, and to have great honor. Steve admits that when he voices characters like Templeton, Templeton, the final product on the big screen often blows him away. Thanks. It's just surreal. You know, you just you hear your own voice coming from an animal, a rat, and uh, I mean, it's kind of cool. Despite being one of Hollywood's busiest actors, appearing in up to four films a year, Steve isn't comfortable about being labelled as a celebrity. I think as a kid, you know, that that was part of the allure of wanting to go into show business, you know, but then becoming an actor um, uh, and discovering, you know, the joys of doing the work is far more important than the exposure or being a celebrity. Um, you know, being a celebrity means absolutely nothing. Having built his career as one of Hollywood's best character actors, we don't often get to see him in the starring role. But that's all changed with Boardwalk Empire. His mesmerising and authentic performance as a corrupt politician won him a Screen Actors Guild Award and proved his leading man material. With his unique appearance, the highly respected Steve Buscemi easily jumps between big blockbuster film and small indie flick. Whether playing a geek, freak or baddie, I think his talent is definitely underrated. And I can't wait to see more Buscemi magic on the big screen in years to come. Stay tuned to Starpix for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.